Hey guys, Derek Chekis here with Team Futaba, and today I want to take you guys through how to wire and set up the external voltage mode on the R7003S bus receiver uh, from Futaba. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about this, and it's really quite straightforward once we uh, understand a few basic things about how to program the receiver and, how, and which wire you actually need to enable the external voltage mode. So, one thing I want to clear up right off the bat, as I see a lot of people get confused with this, is what you need to actually enable the external voltage on the receiver. A lot of people seem to think you need to purchase the Futaba external voltage cable assembly. Uh, this cable assembly includes this wire that I have right here, as well as a special adapter lead wire uh, that you need in order to plug this wire into the receiver, as we'll go through a little bit later in the video. Now, you do not need that cable if you are using a uh, Futaba R7008 S-Bus receiver. The 8-channel receiver has the, has the Molex connector already built into the receiver itself. So this pigtail right here, or this plug, will plug straight into your R7008 receiver, and you don't need anything else other than this wire right here. Um, now for the R7003, I'm going to open up the case here really quick. If we take a look, you'll notice that there's no plug on the front of the case like the R7008 receiver has. Um, so in order to use this receiver, uh, or in order to use external voltage with this receiver rather, we need an adapter cable. Now, the R7003 actually includes this adapter cable with it. If you take the top off of your little case here, there is the adapter wire included with the receiver. So what this means is that when you buy one of the R7003 S-Bus receivers, the only thing you need to purchase still is this same Futaba wire right here. Now the cable assembly that I see a lot of people buying is the uh, entire cable assembly which includes both this as well as the adapter right here. Now that whole assembly, I believe, retails for around $55, which is quite expensive. But you do not need to buy that whole assembly if all you're looking to do is monitor your main pack voltage. All you need is this wire right here. And if you look in the notes here for this video, I will post a link to the wire on Tower Hobby's website. I believe it retails for around $18. So quite a bit cheaper, and this is all you need to wire up external voltage onto your receiver. Okay, so I just wanted to make that point clear before we even got into the video here. So I'm going to go through and show you how I'm going to wire this into my Castle Edge 160 height voltage receiver, and then we're going to go through what settings you need to program into the R7003 in order to get the external voltage to actually work. So for the first segment here, I'm just going to show you how this wire is going to get spliced into my uh, speed controller right here. So I have a Castle Edge 160 high voltage receiver that I'm going to be using in my T-Rex 700 uh, electric. And the way I like to wire up my helicopters is I wire the series harness directly in with the speed controller here. So I have this series wire that I've made up. And this will essentially get wired into the end of the power leads coming out of the receiver here with the two EC5s on the end here. Now, in order to re monitor my external voltage, I basically will need to solder this cable right here, which is the Futaba external voltage uh, wire that we went through in the previous video, and we will wire it in on either side here, of course with positive and negative on their respective sides, and this will give us our uh, series voltage of the pack, uh, since we're taking it from uh, the main positive and negative lead coming out of the speed controller. We don't want to wire it on the series adapter here in between. Uh, we'll basically get zero voltage if we go across there since there's no real voltage difference between the two. So we want to make sure that we wire these on the outer uh, wires right here as you will see in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip back a little bit of the cabling right here and I'm going to strip back some of the wire here and I'm just going to solder these two wires to the outside of some of the exposed wire here. Uh, and then we're going to cut some heat shrink to use just to kind of cover it up and make it look nice so we don't have any exposed wires, as well as to act as a strain relief uh, on this wire right here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back here quickly to the video so you can see what I did. Okay, so as you can see here, I've soldered in my wires. So the positive is over here on the positive lead, and the negative is over here on our negative lead. And I haven't heat shrunk it yet, but I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink right here just to kind of help support the wire and cover up a little bit of where I had the cut back, uh, just so we don't have any exposed wire lead. Um, I may also go ahead and put a little short piece of heat shrink a little bit higher up on the wire just to kind of support it against uh, this part of the cable as well. Um, that'll just again act as a little bit of a strain relief. I find if you just cover this entire section with heat shrink it will just stiffen up the wire and make this a little bit difficult to plug in uh, depending on how you have to bend uh, to connect to your battery pack. So I wouldn't just heat shrink this whole thing. Uh, some models you might be able to get away with it but on the T-Rex I tend to mount this in the front tray and these wires need a little bit of flex in them. So I'm going to put a short piece right here and probably another short piece up here on both sides of the wires. Uh, once I've got those in place, I'm going to go ahead and snap in my uh, bullets into the EC5 connectors here. Okay guys, so in this segment I'm going to show you how to actually switch the receiver into the external voltage mode. So we're going to need obviously our receiver, a Futaba poker tool, and some type of power source. I'm going to go ahead and use my Thunder Power receiver pack right here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is plug in some power to the receiver and we're going to get the solid, or rather blinking intermittently red light here. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and press and hold the link mode button here for 5 to 10 seconds. So, just holding and you can see now it's swapped over to a blinking green LED so that's what we were looking for before we released it so right now we're getting basically one green LED blinking every few seconds so this indicates that we are in servo mode or external voltage mode is disabled so it is not enabled right now and this is how the receiver is set up by default out of the package so in order to swap it over to external voltage mode we're going to go ahead and press the link mode button once quickly. And you can see now we're getting two blinking green lights. So this indicates that external voltage mode has been turned on. And at this point we can go ahead and press and hold the link mode button for more than two seconds. Oops. Oh, we didn't change modes. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and push and hold it for more than two seconds and you notice it goes to the flashing green and red LEDs and then goes back to being solid red and at this point we can go ahead and power off the receiver and if we want to check it we can go ahead and plug power back in once again push and hold the link mode key for five seconds until it goes green and you can see we're getting two green LEDs indicating that we have external voltage mode enabled. Okay guys, so in the last segment here I'm just going to wire it up quickly on the bench so you can see what it looks like. And you can see the external voltage now reads on the transmitter. So the first thing we're going to need is our cable that was included with the R7003 S-Bus receiver. And you can notice this end has a receptacle for the Molex connector that is included on the Futaba external voltage cable. Uh, we want to make sure that we get the polarity of this correct and if you take a look at the Molex connector included on the wiring harness you'll see one side and it may be a little difficult to see on the camera here uh, has two of the terminals kind of protruding a little bit higher uh, and that will correspond with this slot cut out on the top of this mating portion of the connector so these will get plugged together like this and if it was difficult to see the connector, you can see the polarity with respect to the uh, y external voltage cable right here. So you should be able to get that plugged in correctly. Uh, once we have this plugged in, we need to plug our servo pigtail into the correct port of the R7003 receiver here. Now if you take a look, uh, there's a label right here that indicates port 1, port 2, uh, channel 3 slash battery, as well as our SBUS 2 port. So a lot of people get confused as to how uh, these actually map out to the four slots back here. And basically if you are looking 
down at the back of the receiver like this from this perspective with the bottom of the case facing that way the ports would be arranged as port 1 would be towards the top here port 2 would be the lower one port 3 would be the top slot and then your S bus 2 lead would be the bottom one right here so we want to plug our external voltage cable into port 2 which is located uh, right here so I'm gonna go ahead and plug my pigtail into port 2 so you can see I'm in the bottom left slot which corresponds with the bottom left slot here on the sticker now once we've got that plugged in we can go ahead and plug in power to the receiver and get it booted up and you can see I have a green LED because my transmitter is already on at the moment and just so you guys can see it so I have power to the receiver our external voltage cables plugged in so I'm gonna go ahead and plug a battery pack into the ESC here so we get a voltage reading You can hear the ESC arm and now if we take a look at the radio right here now without doing anything special all I did was from our stock menu is press our top left home exit button that will take you to the telemetry monitoring menu and you can see I have my receiver pack voltage is 7.7 .7 volts and I have my external voltage is 45.1 volts so we successfully hooked up the external voltage cable to our speed controller and we have it linked correctly to our receiver and we're able to read our voltage successfully so I didn't have to do anything special to bring these menus up these are by default uh, when you enable fastest mode in the 14SG when you first set up your model so all you have to do to access this is press the home exit button from the home screen or alternatively you could go to the telemetry menu located here in the linkage menu on the second page and that will bring you to this screen here where if you had uh, some other telemetry devices via the fastest 14 channel mode you could display those right here so since I only have these two uh, I like to go to this screen just so it's bigger and easier to see so that basically wraps up my video uh, if you have any questions on how to set this up or any points that you'd like clarified feel free to email me at dcheckus1 at gmail.com thanks again for watching